Hello everybody and welcome to a special edition of Mail Art Monday. So I bet you're probably wondering why I am considering this to be like a special edition and that is because I have decided to do this video in real time. Um, and the reason that I chose to do it in real time is because I'm going to be showing you a few different techniques of ways that I like to do fun things with my Happy Mail. So I just showed you a fun little ephemera folder and a fun way to deck out the actual letter writing component, like where you're going to write your letter. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways of how to do this for yourself, both completely different in all their ways, but still fun nonetheless. And the supplies that I'm basically using are my fun but old Tim Holtz scrapbook paper and some vintage letter writing paper. And the reason that I wanted to combine these two is first, they're beautiful, um, but I just think they're fun to play with. So I've already cut the paper down to know and confirm that it fits the envelope that I want to use to mail these pretty things. So depending on how you want to do it, what size envelope you want to do, you're going to have to base your measurements on that. I didn't take specific measurements, I just held it up against my envelope and then cut it appropriately there. So the first one I'm going to do is this this smaller, um, like a smaller letter writing thing. And I'm just taking some very old onion skin and I'm going to use some double sided sticky tape and I am going to put it on one end and I'm going to attach it to the letter writing folder that I made out of that Tim Holtz scrapbook paper. And the way that I'm going to put it on is very heavy to one side because the way that I'm going to attach this letter writing paper is going to have like a waterfall effect. And so there's going to be two different sheets of paper. And you can see right there where the blue is. That's where I'm going to attach the second piece of paper. And the reason that I wanted to do this was A, so that you could distinguish between the two sheets of paper and that the reader will know that there are two different pages here. But just, again, for another added textural impact. I think it's really fun. I like the look of it, and um, if I had to do it again, I probably would have folded the paper first, because when I went to go fold the folder that's holding the paper, it kind of buckled a little bit, and it feels a little bit funny. It's not going to alter the way the letter is, like it won't make it so you can't read it. It just, it just buckled a little bit. So that's the only thing that I would change if I had to do it over is that I would have folded the actual letter writing paper before I put the tape on and attached it into the folder. So like I said, I'm just using some old tip, Tim Holtz scrapbook paper. Everybody has a ton of this laying around and I need to use mine up. Um, I love the look of it. I uh, use it for envelopes all the time but I'm just not using it quick enough. And so I've decided to kind of use it all. You can see here what I mean when I say it's kind of buckling there and I'm using my ruler to kind of coax it into staying in position, um, but it still buckles a little bit. Like I said, it doesn't really matter. You can't see it. It doesn't come flying out of the side, but the effect is still the same. So I love it and I'm really proud of the way that it came out, but if I had to do it again, I would just fold it. But I have a ton of this paper. I love the look of it and I really feel like it gives the look that I'm after, the vintage style look that I want without having to do any of the work, which is why I love it. So here is a 12 by 12 piece of paper and I'm going to show you what I mean by I just hold my envelope against it and just kind of get a guide of where I want to fold and cut to make sure that this is going to fit inside of my lines. So I just find the spot where on the paper this lines up with the envelope to guarantee that it will have enough space to fit in once I start putting things in. And then I just fold it by hand. Sometimes I use my bone folder and my scoring board, but most times I don't because I'm lazy. <laughs> but I am going to show you what that looks like because that's what you do. Um, this is the, the scoreboard that I have. It's a We Are Memory Keepers one, and I've just cut the excess off based on where it's going to fit in the envelope, but that's the scoreboard that I use, and you could just use a bone folder to kind of fold where you think it would be appropriate for this, and instead of cutting that last bit off like I have been known to do and end up wasting the paper, I'm actually just going to fold it over so that it becomes like 
like a, I don't know, like a protector. So here you can see this is where I'm going to score it. I'm just going to find the appropriate score line that I need and I'm just going to push this down in here so it folds a little bit easier. You don't need to do this. I did just because I wanted to be able to give a really thorough idea. The only problem is that I didn't really leave a whole lot of room for it to fold into and so I end up having to cut a little bit off so that it doesn't buckle. It doesn't bother me. It's not a big deal and I probably could have used one of my fancy cutting scissors to give that edge like a fun design but wasn't interested in finding that. <laughs> so I just cut a little sliver off so that it would fit appropriately. But the fun thing about this is that it becomes like this folder, like this tri-fold folder, and it protects the edges and it makes it so nothing will fall out. So I'm gonna take some of this vintage paper and I'm gonna fold it and cut it in a way that it becomes like a little book inside of this thing. And I really love the look that it has at the very end. It's a totally different look than all the other ones that I've done, but the great thing about this particular one is that it has the letter inside of it, but also has a little pocket for all the ephemera that I want to put into my letters. So it's great, it's all inclusive. I don't have to do a totally separate one. And I actually really love the look of this. I don't film it, but after after I was done and off camera, I did add um, like little brads so that I could like tie string around it and have like a closure. And I feel bad that I didn't show that on uh, camera, but I did add that after the fact and it has a really cool effect. So if you wanted to add like little brads or eyelets so that you could add little closures in, you could totally do that and it would look really fun. So you can pretty much see what I'm doing here. There's really no science behind it. I'm just cutting the paper so that it fits appropriately in this folder. And I'm gonna use washi tape to just tape it in. I'm not gonna do fancy anything. I'm not gonna stitch it or staple it in. I'm just gonna use washi tape to, to tape it in. And that's it. So while I'm doing that in real time, cause th that's what you do, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions that um, have come in. And I love the opportunity to take this, to do this. I just really love answering questions. Um, but Nancy asked, do I have a problem with buying new products and forgetting about that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, especially the Tim Holtz stuff. I don't know why, but I feel like when I oversensitize my myself to product, I like it less. And so I definitely have a problem doing that. Um, sometimes when I put things away, I forget that they're even, like they, they even exist because I am the type of person, if it's out of sight, out of mind, I think most people are that way. But I'm also very organized. I have to, like, everything has to have a home. I can't stand clutter, like, in my office, in my home, in my life. Like, I just can't do it. So I, I put things away, and then I forget I even own them. So that can be a problem sometimes. But definitely, um, yeah, I struggle with that. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've been looking for something completely separate than what I'm originally looking for and then I find something else and then I'm like oh I totally forgot I had this but this actually works better for what I'm looking for and then it's it's a problem <laughs> it's totally a problem um so I can totally relate to you uh with that Nancy another question that came in was what is my next vacation that's a super fun um, a super fun question. I actually had several trips planned over the spring and obviously all of them got canceled. Uh, but the main trip that I take every single year is my anniversary trip with my husband and we were meant to go to Toronto this year. I don't think it's going to happen though. So we are having a plan B, um, and maybe planning a road trip to, uh, the Grand Canyon. Again, I'm not really sure how that's going to work this year. It's not until November, so we've got time to kind of get past this big second wave that came like six months earlier than everybody thought it was going to. <laughs> but um, hopefully we can get it figured out. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm just using the scrap piece to kind of fold so that I have another little folder if I want to do something with it. I don't actually do anything with it. Uh, on screen right away, but I folded it and it's ready to go when I want to um, just add little pockets and ephemera. 
So here I've gathered a bunch of random supplies that I know I want to use to decorate my envelope and I'm just going to go straight into decorating an envelope for this because what is Mail Art Monday without actually decorating an envelope? And I know that's everybody's favorite part, but I wanted to add a little how-to segment on how to make, you know, doing something with your letters actually fun too. So I just grabbed a bunch of scraps. There's no real rhyme or reason and I don't actually make a lot of it work, but um, there it is. So I'm gonna uh, answer a, another question because everybody can watch what I'm doing and it's in real time. So I kind of have to waste a little bit of time, but um, Leah or Lee asked, how and when did I get started with journaling and collecting stationary supplies and how do I find all the cool stationary websites? Do I spend hours researching? Um, so part one, how did I get started into journaling and collecting supplies? I think I answered that in a few videos ago, um, but I got into it after watching a fellow Florida lady, Paper Tams, um, share her traveler's notebook experience and I fell in love with the idea and just sort of went down the rabbit hole from there. And I started collecting stationary supplies many moons ago. <laughs> this isn't like a new thing for me. Um, mail art is probably like the, well, no, I would say journaling is probably, like journaling the way I journal now is newer than my, my mail art history. Because I've been sending pretty mail for quite some time. But um, I've been collecting stationery forever. I've always been a stationery geek. I've always been a paper nerd. I've always been into the analog scene. It's just always been something that I love. My style has definitely changed over the years. I have sort of uh, shifted into vintage stationery and vintage stationery supplies most recently. I've always loved antiques and old things. I think I get that love and passion from my relationship with my grandmother. And um, I think because I just can't keep collecting big antiques because I've got four children, I've sort of forced myself into collecting old paper because that is safe. I can keep that safe. I can keep it tucked away in my office and away from them. And it's not an antique that I have to worry about them crashing into or breaking or getting a hold of. So I think maybe that's where I sort of morphed into antique vintage paper. And how do I find all the cool stationary websites? Um, Lee, I don't actually spend a bunch of time researching. I am just very interested in stationary in general. And so I search for things on Instagram. And that's really how I find a lot of the places that I like to shop at is finding them on social media. Um, or finding them locally to me, like the paper seahorse and um, everything scrapbook and stamps. Those are all in those places are in Florida. And I love supporting local businesses that way. So yeah. How did I discover my style of journaling? Wellington asks, I think um, my style has sort of grown over the years. I used to be super into bright, pretty, springy summer colors. And um, I just, like I said, sort of, sort of shifted into the antique and vintage paper feel um, because I just gravitate towards it naturally. Um, but because I can't buy antiques anymore, I can buy old paper. So I think that's kind of the same thing. <laughs> um, let's see... What do I do? Gray Phoenix 117 asked, what do I do with the stuff that I do not like or have no use for? That's a really good question. And I'm going to be super, super honest here. And please don't hate me. If I get something that I know I will not use, like right off the bat, I'm looking at it and I'm like, no, this is definitely not my style. I immediately decide, do I know someone who will like this? Do I have a pen pal or a friend or anybody that I know will enjoy this more than I would? If the answer is yes, then I save it, set it aside and put it um, away for them to use. But if I know that I will never use it and none of my friends or pen pals or anybody I know will love or appreciate it, Unfortunately, it does get thrown in the trash immediately. I can make that decision within five to 10 seconds. <laughs> and so if I know I won't use something, unfortunately, it does get thrown away. I, I do try to be very conscious. It doesn't happen super often. I do not just 
like straight throw things away. Um, I try to be very mindful and appreciative of the things that I do get. Um, and I try to re-gift them as often as possible. In fact, <laughs> I just sent a bunch of things that I have um, been clearing out and saving um, to one of my girlfriends. And she opened the package and was like, I don't even understand what this is. There's no rhyme or reason to this whatsoever. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to gift it on to somebody because I couldn't throw it away. I have an appreciation and love for it, but not enough where I can find a use for it. And I don't want to be the one that throws it away. So unfortunately, I, I have to be super honest about that. That is that is very raw. And I apologize if that hurts anybody's feelings. But um, yeah, I gift it or toss it. I'm very practical in that way. I don't hold on to things or store things that I know I will not use. I I'm not going to waste my space or my time with that. Um, another question, um, what inspires me when I feel like I don't have inspiration? That's, that's, that's tough. Um, everything pretty much inspires me. Um, I... I find inspiration in a lot of different places. I find inspiration in social media, but I also find inspiration in things that my friends send me. Like like this whole scene, this whole video that I'm doing, everything I'm doing is inspired by a pen pal of mine who does these really beautiful um, layered pockets for mail. And I've been telling myself I really want to do that and I keep putting it off and putting it off because it is time consuming and I just don't have a lot of time to just spend to play. Um, but I challenged myself to do it and I really love the end result and now I've got quite a few so that I can pass this on to other people that I love. So I definitely just get inspired by all my friends and social media for sure. Um, I, I definitely feel like sometimes when I'm going through a funk or like a mild low key depression, I tend to stay away from social media because it gives me anxiety when I see pretty things being made and I just don't have it in me to do the same things. And so, um, I can totally relate to that. I have taken several social media breaks over the past few years just because watching people make pretty things and knowing that I don't have it in me gives me anxiety and I need to separate myself from that. So I'm bringing everything onto the screen so you can kind of get a better idea of what I've made and I'm going to stuff this pocket full. I have shown you what I have put in that other pocket thing that I made because I want to inspire you to do this as well, but also give you an idea of the things that you could incorporate. And for this particular thing, I'm literally just taking the scraps that I didn't use in my in my envelope and putting it into this pocket and that's it. <laughs> Obviously, I will add more things, but I'm just giving you an idea of how you can make things pretty with very minimal supplies. Um, I've really enjoyed this process. I hope that you have too. I hope that you are inspired to make your letters pretty like I have. It's really simple and easy to do. It does take a little bit of time and thought, um, but it's it has such a big wow factor. I have been so inspired by the mail that I'm getting in my P.O. box right now, and it definitely made me realize that my, my mail game needs to be upped. You guys are some champions, let me tell you. <laughs> I have been really, really wowed. Um, by some of the things that I'm getting and it definitely makes me feel a little insecure. <laughs> so to, to battle that, I am making pretty mail right now. So I hope that you have enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I would be happy to answer them for you. If you're not a subscriber, I would definitely encourage you to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And if you like this video, make sure that you like it because it tells me and YouTube the stuff that you like and it shows you more videos like that. So that's it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I have so enjoyed this process of creating in real time with you. I hope that you have enjoyed it too. And that's going to be it for me. Thanks so much for hanging out. Bye.